Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bot. It's a fun show where we dive deeper into FTC robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here at team number 15104, Static Eagles out of Heartland, Michigan. Uh, this team has had a very successful year so far with two first place control awards and have qualified for the state championship. As we're filming that, it's coming up this weekend, uh, but that will already take place by the time this happens, so can't wait to see how they do there. And joining us today from 15104 is going to be Gunner, Ethan, Caden, Maya, and Lydia. And we're talking more about uh, this awesome machine, uh, showing off some CAD models, uh, going to the odometry, and all the other cool features, all here on Behind the Bot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Gunnar, starting on this robot here, you guys have actually modeled this in CAD, so we're gonna be talking more about uh, the design and then, uh, just the general concept of this robot as well too. I always love hearing FTC teams, how it started and how it continues. So take us through this CAD model and anything else you wanna go through. All right, so, well, for design, we actually have three team members, so I think it's pretty spectacular, the work, the work we've done. Um, in CAD, we have a policy of designing it first and building it second. So the majority of our parts work pretty well in CAD before we get to putting realistic parts together. We have a general layout of our entire robot in this model that is open. Then we have other smaller models like the conveyor. Uh, on the robot model, we have the shooter, the hopper, grabber arm, ingest, and conveyor all here. We have smaller parts as well, like our odometry modules and mechanum wheels. We have, really, we have pretty much everything that we need to know to build it in our CAD models, which is, which is where our policy comes from. We need to know that, we, well, we, we, we need to know what measurements we, we have, what parts we need, and, and where we need them. So, so that's pretty much all, all, all it is. So looking at, at the CAD model here, so, uh, you know, FTC teams go through many iterations of the robot over time. So do you, when you modify something on the robot, is it done in CAD first and then you make that modification on your robot? Or how does that process work when you need to make a fundamental yes. change? Yes, definitely. But before we make any changes at all, we, we first do them in CAD. So how many core iterations would you say you've gone through on the robot? Like how many times has it kind of more... Uh, change for lack of a better term uh throughout the season um hundreds maybe thousands <laughs> fair, <times>. fair enough so <laughs> sweet well thanks for showing us that gunner uh really cool stuff i always love teams uh, especially in ftc we're starting to see more and more uh teams do full 3d uh, modeling and 3d renderings of their robots uh so next we're gonna be heading over to ethan uh, as we dive into this robot and we're gonna be talking about the chassis uh that's on the bot here some of the custom work that's been done with that uh so ethan take it away tell us more about the uh, awesome chassis on the spot so our chassis this year is oh, our chassis this year is completely custom as of last year, but it's been modified to fit our three odometry modules. And we have done some testing over the past few years and found that Andy Mark Orbital 20 to ones are the strongest motors available to FTC at the moment. We also have a belt drive with a one to one gear ratio. So how did you actually go about like the, the testing itself? Can can you talk a little bit more about that process behind it? Yeah, we did a motor test stand, which we measured each of the motors. So this is a set of very alike motors. So we tested RPM, stall torque, and other factors of the motors that we would need for running a highly accurate bot. And when you talked about in your, your custom chassis there, you said, you know, it's completely custom done. So how did you come up with the concept of, uh, you know, what material you're going to use? And, you know, can you talk a little bit more about that custom process? I know a lot of it probably ties into your CAD and how you did for that. Uh, but can you describe just a little bit more about what custom means to you on that? All right. So we have made custom side plates and we've designed them using 
Fusion 360, and they're made out of aluminum. And we used custom designs so we can make them like our own teams and have our own team identity within the build of our robot. So as we keep moving on to this robot, next we're going to be going uh, into your, your intake, or you call it the ingest down there. So that's going to be Caden uh, talking a little bit more about that. So we're going to start to follow that ring journey as we do many times here on uh, Behind the Bot. Uh, so we're going to be starting out uh, with the intake on it. I'd love to hear more. Uh, you know, there's one thing to see on camera as we get a little bit closer of, it looks like a very, as I say, beefy intake on that. Uh, so tell us a bit more about that and some of the materials that are also used as well. So for our active ingest, we... We used, we have two rows of compliant wheels. The first row is designed to suck the rings in. The second row brings them up and into our conveyor. Our ingest has a custom gearbox to drive it. And this belt that goes from the second shaft to, and up to this jack shaft that is here sends power down to the ingest. This third belt that goes from the jack shaft and down behind the conveyor is driven by the motor that is under the conveyor. Uh, let's keep moving on on this. And then uh, I think what we'll do is we'll see, we'll talk about some of the, the different subsystems and then we'll see a full ring come through and shot out. Uh, so next up is going to be, uh, we're going to actually bring Gunner back in to talk about uh, what we call the conveyor system, which we just touched on a little bit of how that actually gets uh, into uh, your ring storage, that process that goes into there. And then we'll bring in Maya for that as well. Yeah. So our, our conveyor system initially worked by round belt pulleys that pulled the ring from the ingest to the hopper up here. But after some tests, we found that the round belt pulleys were not very effective at, at doing this. So we replaced them with uh, compliant wheels and cut the treads off of them. M modified so that, compliant wheels. Yeah, so that the, so the spokes were kind of left as arms to grab and pull them up. But... Even even after we had gotten rid of the belt pulleys, uh, there were still some after effects, like the, the sh especially with the shafts. The shafts were really flexing and bending, so that we had to put a dog bone and some spacers in to r reverse and kind of reduce that. Well, let's bring in uh, Maya to talk about the ring storage on there because I, I really want to hear more about the design of that. I love that flip out that you have uh, there, Maya. So tell me a little bit more about the, the concept and design, uh, and then especially if you don't mind touching on that, uh, how you have it flip out, why you decided to go that route, that sort of thing. Um, so for our ring storage, um, it, it um, collects the rings from the conveyor, and it has just enough space for one ring to go in at a time but it can fit three rings in here and it has a wall at the bottom of it so that the rings don't go underneath it. And this whole thing is completely 3D printed and it has holes on the top so that the drivers can see how many rings are in there at a time. Um, it has a servo on the back uh, to move it up and down as you, can, as you see here. And um, it has a servo right here to flick the rings into the shooter. So one of the things I want to make sure we touch on too is that that is able to flip all the way out so you get access uh, into the guts of your robot, right? Can you talk a little bit about like yeah. that thought process behind that? Like, I mean, we see, we've seen a lot of teams with, you know, the magazine style, style type shooter, but I really like that you guys have chosen to make sure you have access to the innards of your robot. Yes, we have it moved back like this because we actually have our hub underneath here. And also, when we're driving, it's sometimes helpful to have the ring storage move all the way back if we need the rings to align more so we can flick them into the shooter is e e easier. So you're saying during a match, you actually have had it flip all the way back before? Yes. So that's really um, interesting. The, huh. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I uh, would not have thought thought of that as we went through. So really like that. Uh, so Lydia, let's bring you in to talk more about the uh, shooter. Uh, and then I know you're going to be touching the wobble goal, but after the shooter, I, let's see a couple of the rings actually brought in and shot through. But talk to me about your concept behind uh, the shooter, uh, what you're using for it, and, and maybe some of the iterations you've gone through as well. 
Our shooter is made up of two CNC plates made of dual core. We used dual core because it created the lowest amount of friction. And also we were able to, because of the CNC, we were able to add our team logo onto the plating. It is run by a 6,000 RPM go build a motor, which powers a Andy Mark wheel. Uh, this motor runs at a speed of 3,650 RPM for power shot for high goal and 3,400 RPM for power shots. It also has a ring guide running along the inside here with rubber to help guide the ring as it fires out from the shooter. Can we actually, uh, if you don't mind, let's see a ring actually go into the robot and just uh, shot out if you don't mind. Love to see that whole process as it comes uh, in and out. And lastly, on the shooter to ask you for that, um, from the you know, driver's perspective on there, uh, how do you determine when the ring is ready to shoot? Is it just a gut feel? Do you have a sensor that tells you? How do you know like how long to wait before you shoot the next ring? Well, on the field, we j we can we we kind of just count how many we put in, and then we really rely on us just knowing when to do it. Uh, the the chassis driver will tell the stack ops driver when to fire, but but uh, until then, it's kind of it's kind it's kind of just did you put three wings in? Yes. Okay. Are you in position? Yes. Fire. Yeah, fair enough on that. Uh, and let's go back to Lydia and talk about the wobble goal mechanism uh, that you use and some of the iterations that have gone uh, through for that. It's always interesting to see the different designs because, you know, we see claws being common, but I see so many different types of claws that come out, and it's really cool to see what your team has come up with as well. Our wobble goal is run by a 117 RPM Go Build a Motor, which powers this claw. And the two forks of this claw are CNC pieces, and this 3D printed grab. This grabber here is 3D printed. It also has foam on the inside to provide extra grip, and we have gone through multiple iterations, including in and out of CAD, to reach this final result. How much uh, play do you have on that in regards to like, or I guess, how much air is there for a driver when he, when the driver goes up to the wobble goal? Uh, how far off can they be, and it still pulls it in? I believe we have a six inch six inches of error that can, and it will still be able to grab accurately. Can we actually see like it, it picking up a wobble gore, just even grabbing it there if you don't need to move the arm? I'm just curious to see what that uh, actual pickup looks like. Very cool. So always great to give, uh, you know, you, you know, you always want those rock star drivers, right? But it's in the heat of the moment, it's nice to have that additional option to uh, to be a little bit off and still be able to score those points there. So uh, let's wrap up and head over to Ethan, who's gonna be talking about some of the programming in this robot, some of the controls that go into it. Uh, of course, odometry will be kept, uh, touching on as well too, but and anything else you wanna cover as well too, uh, Ethan? All right, so as I mentioned earlier, we updated our chassis design to implement these odometry modules. These modules allow us to run using encoders with these rev core hex not, yes, rev through bore encoders, highly accurate. And these wheels are always on the ground. So if we get bumped, we can still know our position. Um, we use Roadrunner, which is an online repository where we can just, we got the code that we use to run. And it allows us to run with splines so we can drive around in curves instead of just straight lines. So we have a PID controller on our grabber that allows it to stay at the same position no matter what. So if there's a force applied downward or upward, it'll always stay in the same position. There's also a PID controller within our shooter that allows us to fling rings at a higher rate. It's fair enough on that. Well, 15104, once again, Static Eagles coming out of Heartland, Michigan. You know, thanks for taking the time to speak with us about your robot and your team. Obviously, you've had uh, awesome success uh, this year. Uh, looking forward uh, to seeing those results from the state championship after they come out. So good luck with that. And uh, of course, look forward to seeing your robot in future seasons as well. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.